Let's go to Ezra chapter 7 and verse 10. So before we can study the Bible, well, let's go to Ezra chapter 7 and verse 10. The Bible says, For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the Lord of the Lord, and to do it, and to teach in Israel statutes and judgments. So what I want to highlight here to us is that before you can study the Bible, you need to prepare your heart. So before we look at how to study the Bible, we're going to look at, we're going to spend some time now to think practically, how do I prepare my heart to study the Bible? And one way that we can prepare our hearts is John 7, verse 17. So let's go to John 7 and verse 17. John 7 verse 17. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. So what is one way that we can prepare our hearts? What is one way? We must be willing to to do what? To do His will, right? We must be willing to do His will. So many times we want to hear the voice of God, we want to understand what He wants us to do for our lives, but we're not willing to do His will. So many times young people want to know, is he the right guy, is she the right lady? And they pray, and they speak to all of their elders, their pastor, their friends, everyone, right? But what they really want is for somebody to tell them, go ahead. They're not, we're not really prepared to do God's will. Amen. Amen. And where do we find God's will? Where do we find God's will? Where do we find God's will? Through the word of the Lord. So if, if you're not studying the Bible, in a way that you can hear God's voice, don't not bother asking what you should do about anything else. You know, I speak to a lot of our young people at our church. And the common question is, how do I know she's the right one? 
คำถามที่ถามพบบ่อยที่สุดเราจะรู้ได้ไงว่าคนนี้เนี่ยเป็นคู่ครัวคู่ของเขาที่เขาควรจะแต่งงานด้วย I praise the Lord that they're even asking me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't bother asking. <laughs> And my answer to them is simply. Well, firstly, how do you know you're right for them? Don't bother asking, are they right for you? Are you right for them? <laughs> And how do you know if you're right for them? Are you studying the Bible? If you're not studying the Bible, conversation ends here at Tanya. Because you want to hear the word of the Lord, if you want to know God's will, if you're prepared, you're going to prepare your heart to follow God's will. But if you want to prepare your heart to follow God's will, then you're going to study But not only do you have to study the Bible, you have to study the spirit of prophecy. And when you're following the principles of the Bible, you follow the principles of the spirit of prophecy. And you still have to come and ask me this question. Something's wrong with the way that you're studying the Bible. Because you're studying in a way that God doesn't speak to you. You're studying in a way that God doesn't speak to you. Because there is no way that God would leave you to make a decision by yourself. You study the Bible. You ask in prayer. God will answer. But if you study the Bible and you pray and you feel like God doesn't answer, then maybe you didn't prepare your heart. And when you don't prepare your heart, you can't hear God's voice. It's as simple as that. So let's spend some time right now to think about how do you prepare your heart to study the Bible. Any thoughts? Please. Throw out some suggestions. I'm going to write it up here on the whiteboard. Pray for willingness. Pray for willingness. Okay, so pray for willingness. Okay, so pray for willingness. Pray. Pray for willingness. Anybody else? Any other suggestions? Submission. Submission. Okay. So you must be willing to submit. Submission. Willing to submit. What else? Yeah, like, uh, the other thoughts. Willing to obey what's clear. Okay, willing to obey. So, same thing. Willing to submit, willing to obey what's clear. Okay, let's move away from that now and okay. think of other things. Practical. I want something practical. How do you prepare yourself to study the Bible? Practical. Study the word of the Lord. You need a different dance for it. You need to be deaf for other people's opinion of how you should live and down with speaking what God has not required you with opinion okay. and with just regarding God's word. Okay. So prepare to put away other people's opinions. Put away your own opinions and listen to God's word. Okay. So as it is. Right. So I would kind of put that under willingness. Okay. So pray for willingness and 
Now, you shouldn't ignore everyone's opinion. There is merit in godly counsel. But how do you know what's godly counsel? Yes. Uh, sorry, you, you had a follow on or? There's counsels on diet, there's counsels on health, there's counsels on. Very good. I wanted to. I was waiting for somebody to say that. So, health. Okay. Health is a very important part of preparing our heart to seek the word of the Lord. Yes. Intentionality, having a time and a place. Okay, time and place. Okay, so prepare time. So planning. So planning. Time, place. We'll come back to that in a minute, but I want to flesh out health a little bit more. So what about health? Give me like drill down a little bit more. Don't just say health. Have enough sleep. Have enough sleep. Very good. Thank you. Uh, sleep. What else? What else contributes to having enough sleep? Organized life. Okay, that's planning, time, place. Okay. Anything else? What else contributes to having enough sleep and therefore being able to wake up on time. By the way, let me take you to a text. Let's open up to Mark chapter 1. Book of Mark chapter 1. Verse 35. Find it up here. Mark chapter 1 verse 35. Mark chapter 1 and verse 35. It says, And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. This is Jesus. So that word morning, in the morning, okay, if you click on it and you look at the strong components, in the morning, okay, let me read to you the definition of morning for Jesus. It says here, in the fourth watch of the night, from three o'clock in the morning until six o'clock approximately. So Jesus' devotion time between 3 to 6 a.m. For a lot of us, we struggle to get up at 6 a.m., right? <laughs> Nothing wrong to aim for 6 a.m., that's fine. But if you want to be like Jesus and you wake up at 6 a.m., you just miss the boat. Because that's when you finish. <laughs> So morning devotion for Jesus most likely started at 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. between 3 to 6 a.m. That's what we need to aim for right now. So how do I make sure, okay, we talked about enough sleep. But how do I make sure that I'm going to get up at 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. or even 6 a.m. the next morning? What else do I need to do? Yes. Sorry? Sleep early? Yeah, we have that here. Enough sleep? Okay, enough sleep, sleep early. Okay, so we need to sleep early. And by the way, studies have been done, right? Uh, young people or people in general who end up waking up before 6 a.m., generally between the hours of 4 to 6 a.m. 
There's a correlation to how successful you are. Almost every CEO of large organizations wake up between the hours of 4 to 5 so it's no mistake that to be successful in life, spiritually and unspiritually, you got to wake up both. So you want to be successful? Wake up at 3 a.m. <laughs> okay, let's come back to this topic, right? So, enough sleep, sleep early. What else contributes for me to wake up on time in the morning? Eat right and eat early. Lady. Eat right and eat early. Very good. Eat right and eat. So, if you have trouble waking up early in the morning, even if you sleep late, here's the quick fix. Don't, uh, don't eat after 6 p.m. Guaranteed you're going to wake up 4 to 5 a.m. Or 5 to 6 a.m. Even if you slept late. Even if you slept late. Because you're going to be too hungry. <laughs> so that's actually more important than sleeping early. Eating early. So one of the big problems that we have, right, in every city life kind of civilization, is eating late. Now eat right. What do we mean by eat right? What do we mean by eat right? What does that mean? Sorry? Plant-based, whole foods. Vegetarian diet. Vegetarian diet. You know, a lot of young people love to ask me, is vegetarianism a salvation issue? So here's my answer. Because of the diet test in Daniel Chateau. Because Daniel refused to defile himself with the king's food. What happened to him at the end of the day? He was ten times smarter than everybody else. Him and his friends. So, if you are a vegetarian, you're ten times smarter than everybody else around you. And because you're ten times smarter than everyone else around you, you're ten times more able to absorb the Bible. Because you're ten times more able to study the Bible, you're able to stand firm at the end of time. You don't get swept away by deception. You're giving yourself the best platform to receive the word of the Lord. Is that a salvation mission? I hope so. You see, the point is not about vegetarianism. The point is, are you willing to prepare your heart to seek the word of the Lord? As a valley of dry bones, how important is it for you 
to build muscle and skin and breathe so that you can be an exceeding great army, what are you going to sacrifice? What are you going to sacrifice? When you put it in that context, being a vegetarian, no idea. And by the way, even if you wanted to eat meat, there is no meat out there on the street that you can buy here. Why? Because there are two things that God asks us not to eat if you have to eat meat. What is that? The fat of the animal. So no KFC. And the blood of the earth. Because a large proportion of uh, disease today is passed on through the blood. If you go and eat street food, there is no way that you're not eating blood and fat. So if you want to eat if you really want to eat meat the biblical way, you need to find a kosher butcher. You need to find a kosher butcher, a Jewish butcher. Because okay. they're the only ones who know how to prepare meat in the biblical way. Prepare your heart to receive the word of the Lord. Go Anything else? What other practical things do we need to do to prepare our hearts to receive the word of the Lord? Sorry? Okay, so uh, finish off your work. Okay, so uh, separate work. work time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's planning. That's all part of planning. What else? Anything else? What else is going to disturb your mind and stop you from being able to receive the word of the Lord? Seeing or listen to Christian music. Sorry? Seeing or listen to Christian music. Music. Don't read. put it, don't read. Music has a huge effect on our mental capacity. Medium. So I'll put key music and media together. So what we're watching, what we're uh, listening to, has a deep effect on our ability to receive the word of God. One of the things that we've done at our church is for church service we sing hymns. And outside of uh, divine service time, everything else we sing are scripture songs. And through singing scripture songs, I've never had a young person come up to me and say, you know what, I'm sick of singing scripture songs, I miss my hill songs. Because 
And so I recommend uh, simplifying your music. If you think about it in the context of am I able to receive the word of the Lord, it becomes easier to have that discussion about music. If I have to, if I'm talking about it in relation to preparing my heart to receive the word of the Lord, it becomes easier for me to discuss music. Is it good or bad? And I find that despite all the music that um, you know that, that that really raises the passion and the excitement for so-called worship in a lot of the Pentecostal churches, uh, or for that matter, in some of our own churches, uh, when it comes to studying the Bible, their understanding of the Bible is so shallow. <laughs> Because it's really hard to study the Bible when you're having an adrenaline rush from all the drums and the loud music and the excitement and the speed and all of that, right? When your heart's pounding, it's really hard to study the Bible. Because God says to us, peace, be still, and know that I am So the simple principle is make sure you get music, music that's going to help your heart to be still, so that you can hear God's voice. And the principle for at least our church to kind of get rid of all the arguments of, you know, is that music okay? Is that music okay? Just sing scripture songs. You will cut out all the arguments. Of course, we can get all into all the music history and deep uh, understanding of that. We'll leave that for another time. And if you want more information on that, I've got a bunch of videos or uh, sermons that I can point you to on that. But, uh, but let's move on from that. Anything else that's going to affect your heart? Anything else? Mobile phones. Mobile phones? <laughs> screens. Oh, screens, yes. You, you mentioned that. Well, let me put that up. It's, uh, it's mentioned twice. Screens, yes. So, television, movies, all of this. Screens, yes. The scripture says, as much as depends on you, be at peace with all men. As much as depends on you to be at peace with all men. So if you have some estranged relationships, you, you probably ought to try and sort it out. So relationships. And I'll put a lot of that emotion. So that could be friends, that could be marriage. Marriage as well. And closely related to that, if you have strife, as you mentioned, uh, what's associated with strife? What do we, how do we overcome that? What do we need to be prepared to do? Sorry. Forgive. So forgiveness. Reconciliation. Uh, I once had a friend, a mentor. He told me that he was at Bible school. 
จะมีเพื่อนคนหนึ่งเพื่อนคนนี้เขาอยู่ที่ศูนย์ศึกษาพระคัมภีร์ Studying to be a pastor คือไปเรียนเพื่อจะเตรียมตัวเป็นศาสนาจารย์ And he was in Bible class เขาเรียนอยู่ในชั้นเรียนพระคัมภีร์ And he just could not get what the teacher was teaching แล้วเขาไม่สามารถเข้าใจสิ่งที่ครูพยายามสอน He read it เขาอ่านแล้ว But he couldn't understand แต่เขาไม่เข้าใจ And everyone else was understanding. So he told the teacher. And the teacher sat him down and he said, Is there anybody in your life that you haven't forgiven? And he said, Yes. I hate my father. And I've never forgiven. So he said, Don't bother studying the Bible. Go home and reconcile with your father. So he went back. He reconciled with his father. And when he came back, when he came back, he could understand. So uh, when we haven't reconciled, when a husband and wife are unable to forgive each other, when we don't, can't, aren't able to reconcile before the sun sets, that will impact your morning devotion the next day. That's why the council is here. Because it will impact your your heart's preparation to receive the word of the Lord. What else? Yes. Don't sin in your life. Sin. Unconfessed sin. So unconfessed sin. I'm sorry. Right, continuing sin. So unconfessed sin is continuing sin, basically. So if you're continuing the sin, yeah, okay, I'll put that. Right. Yeah. So victory over sin is, is important uh, as we spend time at home. So back on health, there's some other things as well, right? What about the negatives on on the health side? What shouldn't we be doing? What shouldn't we be doing? Yeah, I mean we talked about vegetarianism, but what else? What are some more extreme, sorry, stress and worries? Yeah, stress. What else? By using caffeine. Yeah, so drugs. Alcohol. All of these cause us to not be able to prepare our hearts. So here's some of the things that uh, I put up. Uh, and there are more, of course. Um, some of us need to get away. Some of us need to get away. Some of us may address, uh, may not be able to address those things above without a wilderness experience. Wilderness, getting away from everything. 
So some of us may struggle um, even though you know that you want to study the Bible more, you know that you want to give up more of your life to study God's Word, but you still struggle. Why? Because you're in familiar settings. Familiar settings. We are all creatures of habit. Some of us, we live in the city. We get up in the morning. We're on the way to work. We see that certain sign. We're familiar with that certain pub. We hang out with the familiar friends that smoke. Or we eat at certain restaurants where we can't give up that food. So, so for the sake of preparing your heart to receive the word of the Lord, you've got to get away. And that's exactly why we set up the Bible school. It's to allow lay people, old and young, to get away from their surroundings that they're used to. And just study the Bible. And we've seen year after year of the Young people's lives change. And older, you know, older members' lives change. As they just spend four to five months studying the Bible and hearing God's voice. Hear the word of the Lord. And the lives are changed. <coughs> Let's talk for a moment about the home sorry, music media. Media. Let's talk for a moment about the screens or social media. What should you do if in the morning you get up, first thing you do is flick on your phone and you're just on Facebook. This is a real addiction, right? Old and young. Maybe for the older it's emails. What, what should we do? How can we deal with this? Or any of these other struggles for that matter, it doesn't have to be just that. Let's, let's try to give some practical solutions of how we should deal with it. Any thoughts? Don't have your phone in your bedroom. Don't have your phone in your bedroom, okay? That's a good one. Don't put your phone in your bedroom. Anything else? Sorry? Set your priority. Okay. But some of the some of us are, our wills are so weak. Uh, just as in Romans chapter seven it says that I will do, I do not. But what I don't want to do, I do. It's how do we break that? How do we deal with that? Tell yourself 
ตั้งใจบอกตัวเองบอกว่าตอนเช้าตื่นขึ้นมาหยิบบัพีอย่าไปหยิบโทรศัพท์ But for many of us, you can tell yourself the night before, but the next morning, out of instinct, out of habit, you're just gonna reach for the phone. Our Bibles are open. So, yes, if we have that problem, the first thing is don't study the Bible on your phone. So, if this is your problem, you gotta stop studying the Bible with your phone. Anything else? Any other practical solution? So we listed out the issues. What are the solutions? Set a specific time to specific and strict time to check messaging or whatever social media that you need to check. Okay, set a specific time. Okay, so set a specific time. Not every now and then. So pop job job for the plan to media and stuff. So set a specific time. Now I think uh, at least on Apple you can set screen times, so you can actually block yourself. So now, yes. Apple is able to set the time. There's a feature called screen time, so you can set when you can't access your browser anymore. Or certain apps you can't access it. And you can put a password on it and give it to somebody. Let somebody else put the password on it. Yes. Exercise, yes. Anything else? How can we help ourselves to overcome? Because, look, the reality is many of us, it's an addiction. Right. It, it's not, you can't just tell an addicted person, just tell yourself not to do it. Right. Accountability. You said to have someone else put the password in, yes. have someone else have accountability. accountability. Find an accountability partner. Find accountability partners. That's really important. It's partially why, like Alcoholics Anonymous and these type of uh, it's, it's kind of how these, uh, you know, uh, these uh, institutions function, right? The programs function. I mean, having accountability partners is really key. So if you're a married couple, ask your spouse to take your phone away from you and do not give it back until you've done morning devotion. If you have friends that you're living with at home uh, or you have uh, parents or relatives, give them the phone and say do not give it back to me until I told you I've done my devotion. And find friends who will pray for you and with you. If you pray the night before for God to wake you up in the morning, He will wake you up. The problem is not God didn't wake you up. The problem is you didn't ask God to wake you up. So that's you know that's uh, so those are some of the practical ideas. Uh, if you need to get up and have a shower or you know 
wash your face to wake yourself up, you know, have a drink of water, plan all of those things. Okay, um, I think we've had enough discussion around this. Just one more thing I want to point out. All of these things have been listed and more. There is a spirit of prophecy book that addresses all of these issues. <coughs> Ministry of Healing. <coughs> Councils on diet and foods. Uh, Adventist home on marriage. Uh, mental health. Uh, sorry, that my character and personality is dealing with mental health. MCP. So there are books in the spirit of prophecy that deal with all of these issues. You see, the spirit of prophecy was given to God's remnant church. We're the dumbest generation in history. So how did the devil deal with that? In Asia, in Asia, many of us have grown up. Spirit prophecy is optional reading. God forbid some of our institutions have stopped teaching spirit of prophecy. The importance of the spirit of prophecy I have discovered as I taught how to study the Bible is to teach us how to prepare your hearts for the most optimal way so that we can receive the word of the Lord in this time of its history. And as a young person, I grew up in the Adventist church. Being told that I don't need to read spiritual prophecy, I never read it until I was a little <laughs> and we try to put, like, we try to tell our young people, oh, you know, Ella White wrote only for her time, not for <laughs> And so the church is weak. We can't study the Bible. We can't study the Bible. Because we justify me eating is okay. We argue over contemporary Christian music uh, versus hymns. We justify unequally yoked relationships. And so the church is so weak that we don't even know truth for her. <coughs> Study the spirit of God. And then we are going to be able to 
It is the present truth for this generation to get yeah. us to the second coming of Jesus. We need a Savior. Amen. Let's buy his holy. Father of heaven, I want to thank you for showing us the importance of preparing our hearts. I want to thank you for the counsel of your prophet. As you looked far down into the present day, you saw a generation that would be so weak and so confused uh, and so addicted that you knew we needed the spirit process. Thank you for giving us more understanding. Thank you for giving us uh, a guide, uh, a, a more detailed guide on top of the Bible for this last generation. Father, I pray that you would help us to make a commitment. Help us to make some decisions right now. Of the principles of health, the addictions we need to cut out of our lives. The things that are taking us away from you. And the time that we should spend in studying your word. Please, Father, give us a strength. Send accountability partners and counselors who will help us. For we are weak. But we know that you are ready to give us all the help we need. And we ask you for the power of your spirit. For this we pray. In Jesus' name.